This aircraft has stirred considerable controversy, representing over a decade of development and serving as the successor to the renowned flanker. However, Western critics have labeled it as mere imitation. Marketed as a cutting-edge fifth-generation Russian stealth jet, it's been questioned for its alleged lack of stealth capabilities. Despite being hailed as the future backbone of the Russian Air Force, production has been limited to just a few dozen units. While the skepticism surrounding its performance is palpable, there's a lingering possibility that this aircraft holds greater significance than mere imitation. So, is it merely a product of Western propaganda, or a potentially underestimated adversary? Let's delve into the Su-57, dispel the myths, and uncover the truth behind Russia's pursuit of a stealth fighter, the Su-57. The Su-57, Russia's much-vaunted fifth-generation stealth fighter, emerges onto the global stage as a subject of intense scrutiny and speculation. With its sleek lines and cutting-edge technology, it embodies the pinnacle of Russian aerospace engineering, promising to rival and surpass the capabilities of Western counterparts such as the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. Yet, beneath the surface lies a maelstrom of controversy and doubt, fueled by questions surrounding the Su-57's true capabilities and its ability to withstand the rigors of modern warfare. At the heart of this debate lies a fundamental question, is the Su-57 truly a formidable adversary to Western fighter jets, or merely a facsimile, lacking the stealth and technological sophistication necessary to compete on the global stage? To answer this question, we must delve into the intricate world of stealth technology, engine design, and weapon systems, unraveling the complexities that define the Su-57's place in the pantheon of military aircraft. In this exploration, we will trace the origins of the Su-57, from its inception in the corridors of Russian aerospace firms to its emergence as a symbol of Russian military might. Along the way, we will confront the myths and misconceptions surrounding this enigmatic aircraft, separating fact from fiction to uncover the truth behind its controversial reputation. Join us as we embark on a journey into the heart of the Su-57, where the future of aerial combat hangs in the balance. In the 1980s, there was significant interest in stealth aircraft, leading the Americans to launch the ATF program, which eventually produced the F-22 Raptor. However, it's important to note that the F-22 Raptor isn't strictly a stealth jet as commonly believed. Rather than being completely invisible to radar, stealth technology aims to prevent enemy radars from detecting and locking onto the aircraft in time. The B-2 bomber, for instance, was designed to evade Soviet air defenses by reducing its radar cross-section. The F-22 Raptor, on the other hand, was developed as an air dominance fighter, intended to secure airspace before enemy missiles could lock onto it. However, the Russian approach to this technology differed. They prioritized high performance over stealth, leading to the MFI program aimed at creating a high-performance aircraft with some degree of radar cross-section minimization. This endeavor resulted in the failure of the MiG-144 due to economic challenges in Russia during the 1990s. Following the disappointment of the MFI program, the Sikhoi Bureau took initiative and developed the S-37 Burkut, a self-funded futuristic fighter showcasing the potential future of the Russian Air Force. The distinctive forward-swept wing design of the S-37 inspired further innovation in the nation. In the early 2000s, the Russian government initiated a new program called PAC-FA, Prospective Air Force Complex of Fighter Aviation, selecting Sukhoi without competition due to its proven ability to develop prototypes with its own funding. Given the uncertain future of MiG, Sukhoi was the logical choice. 
Amidst discussions about the F-22's stealth capabilities, Sequoia aimed to develop its own advanced fighter, leading to the inception of the Su-57 project. For years, the new Russian fifth-generation fighter remained shrouded in secrecy, sparking intense speculation on military forums, blogs, and in the news. However, in 2010, the veil was lifted as the first pictures and videos of the aircraft, known as the T-50, emerged, showcasing its inaugural flight. Initial media reactions ranged from labeling it as a mere F-22 copycat to praising its uniqueness. Yet, the truth lies somewhere in between. Let's delve into why the Su-57 stands out on its own. At first glance, the Su-57's wing design does resemble that of American fifth-generation fighters. However, this similarity ends there. Unlike the F-22 or F-35, the Su-57 retains the flanker-like design with engines housed in gondolas and a central tunnel to enhance maneuverability and lift performance. Its canted vertical stabilizers serve the dual purpose of minimizing radar return and functioning as control surfaces, reminiscent of the YF-23 concept, which the Su-57 draws inspiration from more than the F-22. The aircraft's fuselage profile not only bears resemblance to the YF-23 but also the NF-23 concept, particularly the naval variant explored in a previous video on our channel. Moreover, the Su-57 incorporates horizontal stabilizers along with leading-edge root extensions LERX, that act as canards, emphasizing maneuverability. However, a notable deviation from convention is the decision to feature regular thrust vectoring nozzles and exposed titanium AL-41 engines, with the compressor blades partially visible within the S-ducts. This design choice has raised eyebrows, especially considering the Su-47 had hidden compressor blades. Speculation regarding the Su-57's stealth capabilities immediately arose, with some questioning its comparability to the F-35 or F-22. In essence, while the Su-57 shares some design elements with its Western counterparts, it possesses distinctive features and design choices that set it apart. The debate surrounding its stealth capabilities warrants further examination to dispel any misconceptions. The team at Aircraft 101 conducted comprehensive research to definitively address the question of stealth capabilities. They meticulously crafted highly detailed 3D models of renowned modern aircraft and utilized mathematical models and radar scattering simulations to assess radar cross-sections across various frequencies. A leaked document regarding the Su-57 stealth design purported an RCS, radar cross-section, of 0.1 to 1 square meters, significantly higher than the F-35's 0.00005 or the F-22's 0.001 square meters. This indicated that the Russian jet exhibited stealth characteristics akin to that of a brick wall. However, there's a crucial technicality to consider. Aircraft 101's results, while accurate, lacked consideration for RAM, radar-absorbing material, effects, which can't be precisely calculated. The Su-57's median RCS in a frontal 120-degree aspect was found to be 0.48 square meters, corroborating the Russian report. In comparison, an F-35's median RCS was measured at 0.06 square meters. Despite the diagram illustrating a minimal RCS for the F-35, it's crucial to note that this represents the minimal RCS, not the overall frontal RCS of the aircraft. Considering the potential impact of RAM materials, which can reduce RCS by up to 90% when applied to the entire object, it's clear that the Su-57 cannot match the stealth capabilities of the F-35 or F-22. However, any modern radar would encounter difficulty detecting and tracking a target with an RCS below 1 square meter, indicating that the Su-57 is stealthy enough by Russian standards. Concerns regarding the Su-57's engines, particularly their exposed nature, may contribute to higher RCS compared to their American counterparts. Nevertheless, the presence of exposed screws, while notable, isn't a significant factor as both the F-35 and F-22 also feature exposed screws yet remain highly stealthy aircraft. Ultimately, while stealth isn't the Su-57's strongest suit, the main issue lies with its engines. 
the Russians fell into a familiar trap that plagued many Cold War projects. They initiated the development of the Su-57 without having its new engines ready. While commencing development without engines isn't inherently problematic, jets like the Rafale and Su-27 successfully flew their initial flights without engines tailored for them. The Su-57's engine issue persists. The saga surrounding the development of the Izdalai 30 engines remains unresolved. Consequently, serially produced Su-57s utilize AL-41 F1 engines, similar to those on the Su-35. While these engines are formidable, they're not the originally intended supercruise-capable AL-41 F1S variant, as they were too large for the Su-57. Instead, the Su-57 features older AL-31 engines, potentially hampering its supercruise capability under full combat load. Despite this, the AL-41 engines boast 3D thrust vectoring, granting the Su-57 exceptional maneuverability and a thrust-to-weight ratio over 1, making it formidable in dogfights. Although such scenarios are rare in modern warfare, the forthcoming Izdalai 30 or AL-51 engines are expected to rectify this, with planned supercruise capability at Mach 1.5 and serrated nozzles akin to the F-135 engine on the F-35. Additionally, these engines may eliminate exposed titanium areas, possibly adopting a flatter, stealthier design akin to the S-70 drone. However, the timeline for this upgrade remains uncertain. It's worth noting that the Su-57 is accompanied by its own drones, adding an intriguing dimension to its capabilities. The Su-57 could potentially gain an advantage through the utilization of wingman-style drones like the S-70. Unlike the Su-57, the S-70 is designed with stealth in mind, and its size allows it to carry significant armament. Paired with the Su-57, it could form a potent protection or attack force, with the Su-57 or an AWACS aircraft spotting targets for the drones to engage unseen. Russia is also developing a new data link system called the OZAD, akin to NATO's LN-16, facilitating military drone operations. While the S-70 has undergone several test flights and is deep in development, questions arise regarding funding amidst the war in Ukraine and the state of the Russian armed forces. The financial aspect emerges as the main issue with the Su-57 project. Initially, India partnered with Russia in 2007 to finance the fighter's development, aiming for a two-seater variant and the license to build it domestically. However, delays and issues, particularly concerning engines and avionics, led India to exit the project in 2018, with the option to purchase finished aircraft later. Russia downscaled its original plan from 200 fighters to just one squadron of 12, but a contract for 76 aircraft was signed in 2017. Nevertheless, delivery has been sluggish, with only around 10-plus airframes in operational service. Allegedly, the Su-57 was deployed in Syria and the Ukraine conflict, purportedly engaging and even scoring a kill against the Ukrainian Su-27. However, Due to the propagandistic nature of the conflict, such claims must be taken with skepticism. Regarding a hypothetical confrontation with America's best, the F-22 Raptor or F-35, it's challenging to predict the outcome definitively. Get ready for an in-depth exploration because we're delving into the intricate details of the Su-57's electronics and weaponry. Equipped with a new AESA radar called the N036 Belka, the Su-57 boasts five distinct antennas. The main antenna operates in the X-band, enabling target locking, engagement, and long-distance detection. Two side antennas also operate in the X-band but with shorter ranges, enhancing coverage to around 270 degrees. Additionally, two antennas on the wings function in the lower L-band frequency, contributing to the electronic warfare system. At the forefront of the canopy lies the RSD system, facilitating detection of thermal signatures of enemy aircraft and the utilization of IR-guided missiles without radar. This functionality parallels the EOTS feature on the F-35 and distinguishes the Su-57 from the F-22 Raptor, although the latter may receive a similar upgrade in the future. The Su-57 incorporates sensor fusion, processing collected data to provide situational awareness to the pilot, 
akin to the DS system on the F35. However, it falls short of the F-35's unparalleled unpowered situational awareness afforded by its helmet and DS system. One notable drawback of the Su-57 is the absence of an integrated targeting pod like the F-35. Conversely, the F-35 can utilize internal systems for targeting ground-based targets, while maintaining stealthiness. In summary, the Su-57 stands as a capable platform with certain deficiencies compared to its Western counterparts. Nevertheless, it surpasses any fourth or fourth-plus generation aircraft on the market, and remains at the forefront of fifth-gen fighter development, earning its status as a formidable contender. Regarding the future of the Su-57 program, despite its imperfections, it boasts a potent radar, avionics, decent stealth capability, and potentially great engines in the planned Su-57M update. While concepts like drones remain in the realm of science fiction for now, the Su-57's capabilities, including its capacity to carry the R-37M long-range missiles, render it formidable in combat. Russia envisions the Su-57 leading a team of jets for surveillance and combat support. However, the limited production of only 10 to 15 Su-57s, even with the initial batch of 76, falls short of countering the F-22 fleet, let alone the extensive F-35 fleet in the US and NATO. Ironically, amid debates over superiority, attention shifts to the Chinese J-20, a more immediate threat due to its serial production compared to the Su-57. Considering the current state of the Russian armed forces amidst the Ukraine conflict, only time will reveal the Su-57's true potential. Despite skepticism and claims of obsolescence, the Su-57, much like the F-22, holds promise in shaping future aircraft and potentially entire generations to come. With that said, thanks for joining us for this in-depth exploration of the Sequoia Su-57. If you found this discussion informative and engaging, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for further compelling aviation content. Should you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Your feedback is invaluable to us. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.